Sometimes we yearn for a simpler time when motorcycles were just motorcycles. In those days, one would travel predominantly on dirt roads via horse or car or bicycle or motorcycle. What type of motorcycle, you ask? Well, you had your choice of Indian, Harley, Royal Enfield, maybe Triumph, BMW, Moto Guzzi, and several brands that you've never heard of because they've long since pulled a blockbuster. And they'd have a couple of models to choose from, usually a big one and a small one. All motorcycles were made for traveling off-road, and if you were crazy enough to want to wreck your bike by racing it on even rougher terrain, you signed up for a scramble and participated in a chaotic dash across farmer's fields where the object was to get from point A to point B by any route that got you there in the shortest amount of time. Maybe, if you really wanted to win, you'd chop off some weight, raise the exhaust, put on some longer suspension. Maybe all of the top guys would do that. Eventually, manufacturers started producing bikes with those specific features in order to sell them ready to race to the dirt crowd. At some point in the 60s, the Scrambler became the dirt bike, or maybe for a long while those two were interchangeable. And then the dirt bike became the adventure bike, the dual sport, the rally bike, trials bike, hill climber, MX bike, trail bike, etc. and so forth. And all of them are designed for use off pavement, more or less. Some a lot more and some a lot less. All of these dirt bikes are constantly evolving and becoming more specialized, and as a result diverging further away from each other. There's a reason for this evolution. Part of it has to do with the need for specialized machines in order to compete. You could enter a trials competition on an R1250GS, but you wouldn't win no matter how good a trials rider you are. You need a specialized bike for that. Same with motocross, same with a rally race. And you wouldn't take a trials bike or a motocrosser on a cross-country tour. All those bikes have become better at some or all of the aspects of motorcycling than the original scramblers. And with the paving over of most roads, the divergence between dirt and street has made for vastly different motorcycles. Adventure bikes and dual sports straddle that divide today and they do it very well indeed, better than any scrambler past or present. So why are scramblers back and why are they still immensely popular? In this video we will answer that question and also look at the best and worst scramblers on the market today. Which ones can actually scramble and which ones are mere exercises in styling? So hit that subscribe button and bell, like the video, and let's get into it. Why would anyone buy a scrambler over an adventure bike or a dual sport? The dual sport is really a modern scrambler with way better off-road ability, and the typical smaller adventure bike can do everything a scrambler can do but better. Bigger tank, better wind protection, often way more power. So why do people still buy Scramblers? The same reason they buy Harley Triumph and Royal Enfield retro motorcycles. Because they're cool and they look good, as legitimate a reason to buy a bike as any. Motorcycles are about passion and self-expression, and if you vomited in your mouth a little upon hearing that, then neither Scramblers nor retro bikes are for you. Get a BMW R1250RT for the road and a KTM 690 Enduro for off-roading and enjoy those very modern, very capable motorcycles. But if you have even a bit of hipster in you and you can't resist a little bit of that old school vibe then maybe attacking the twisties or zipping around forest fire roads on a cool looking scrambler is your thing. Scramblers are unique and that's important to some. So let's see what's on the market. I'll focus on bikes available globally, but at the end of the video we'll also mention some awesome scramblers that you may not have heard of because they're not built by the big manufacturers. Let's start with street bikes that have been given the scrambler treatment but not really given much actual scrambling ability. If you want to look like Steve McQueen but don't intend to ride on anything rougher than the very occasional gravel road, then these may be for you. First we have the Yamaha SCR950. And while it may somewhat look the business, I wouldn't take this bike even as far as a gravel road. This is basically a Yamaha Sportster uh, Bolt with a higher seat and a makeover. And it has all the cruiser characteristics of a Bolt. Big V-twin, low ground clearance, low exhaust, and the mass of a black hole. I actually like the SCR more than the Bolt because I like sitting higher on a bike, but do not deceive yourself, this is a scrambler in name only. This bike has great build quality, comes in at a very reasonable 8,700 US dollars and is a fine road bike. However, why Yamaha didn't build a scrambler out of the much lighter XSR 700 I'll never understand. An XSR 700 with Tenere 700 suspension and wheels would blow most of the other scramblers in this video straight out of the water. 
Another scrambler in looks only is the Moto Guzzi V7 III Rough, basically a dressed up V7 with wire spoked wheels. This is my favorite V7 and while the shaft drive will ensure that you don't have to worry about cleaning your chain when you bomb down the gravel roads, the high weight, low ground clearance and lack of engine protection will ensure that you won't want to take your $10,800 bike off pavement. Another nice bike for the street. A third bike of this ilk is the one that started the modern scrambler craze in 2006, the Triumph Street Scrambler. The street in the name tells you all you need to know because this is basically a T100 with a higher exhaust and slightly chunkier tires. It's a bit more off-road worthy than the Yamaha and Guzzi but it's still heavy and lacks proper off-road suspension so if you want a Triumph Scrambler for bombing off-road, this $11,000 900cc one is not the one for you. The Street Scrambler looks cool and is good on the road, but we'll get to a Triumph you'll like better a little later in the video. Now if you're looking for something a bit more muscular, that still has a tiny amount of off-road ability, then the Indian FTR 1200 Rally may tickle your fancy. The most powerful of all these motorcycles, this is the only FTR left with any pretense of off-road ability. This year Indian quit pretending that the other FTRs were off-road machines and put 17 inch wheels on all of them except for the Rally which kept its 19 inch front and 18 inch rear. If you're going to blast around on pavement while looking dirt ready then you'll enjoy the power and V-twin snarl of this bike. If you want to bomb off-road, please remember that this $14,000 bike weighs over 500 pounds, has 120 horsepower and will both weigh and cost more if you outfit it with the proper protection. Better keep this one on pavement. But not all scramblers are built for pavement only. So let's take a look at some that are worthy of the name. The first is the Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled. Yes, Ducati has many scrambler models. In fact, the scramblers make up a separate division of the company. But most of them are fun street bikes with a bit of gravel ability. Not so the Desert Sled, which actually sports 7.9 inches of suspension travel on either end and decent off-road ergonomics. It has good power, 73 horses, the wet weight isn't bad at 450 pounds, and while the wheels should really be larger, the current 17-19 inch combo isn't terrible. Recently Ducati launched its fast house version which I really hope will resemble its highly modified Mint 400 winning race bike. Well, all they did was give it a paint job and bolt on some parts. But the Desert Sled is still a pretty off-road capable bike, making it one of the few true scramblers available. Imagine if the Fast House version had that tall suspension and 21 and 18 inch wheels. Oh well, maybe next year Ducati. The other global off-road capable scrambler is Triumph Scrambler 1200, which comes in the more street oriented XC version and the taller and more hardcore XE guys. The XC is a good gravel bike, but the XE is where it's at if you're going to scramble. This one has all the suspension you need, with almost 10 inches of travel front and rear and an Olin's rear shock. You also have traction control, rider modes and a bash plate. Does it have any faults? Its seat sits tall at 34.2 inches and also wide so it's not an easy reach to the ground. It's also top heavy and not light coming in at well over 500 pounds full of gas, which isn't ideal for off-road stuff. It's more of a bike for desert running Baja style than for single track. Of course all of these features mean it ain't cheap, costing 15,400 US dollars. And its last fault is that it's just too expensive and too pretty to take bashing off-road. If I owned one I'd armor it up before venturing off pavement in any serious way. Now I did say that I throw a couple of wild cards in there and these are mostly for Euro viewers because these two companies do not have the global dealer network that the big manufacturers enjoy. First, Norton is back under new ownership so let's hope that the shenanigans of the past are left in the past. I don't know much about the Norton Atlas Ranger as the details have not yet been officially released, but I do know that it looks absolutely slamming. It will have a 650cc liquid cooled parallel twin motor that will produce over 80 horsepower. Other than that information is scarce but the bike looks spectacularly cool. It may not be the most capable off-road weapon but take it to your local bike night and a crowd is guaranteed to form. And you're going to pay for that attention because Norton is going to be a low volume premium brand and this bike's projected price will be around $15,600. The final bike I'll mention here hails from Italy and is one of the most off-road capable. The Cabarello 500 Rally is maybe the closest scrambler to a dual sport and could be the most capable when the pavement ends. 
It has a 450cc single cylinder motor that produces 40 horsepower and sports just under 8 inches of suspension travel at both ends. Most important of all, it's light, about 350 pounds full of fuel. And anyone who's ridden off-road knows that lightweight is the most important feature of an off-road motorcycle. And the price is fairly reasonable, at just over 9,000 bucks US. I picked this bike because it looks spectacular and is the most likely of all the motorcycles I listed to keep up with a group of dual sports on an off-road ride. Living in Canada, I've never seen one in person, but can you imagine if one of the big global manufacturers built something like this? If one of the big four put out one of these, they'd be flying out of showrooms. So if it was my money, which one would I buy? The Triumph Scrambler 1200 XE. It really is the bike that can do it all. It's got good power, it's fast on the road, good off-road, can go two up and looks amazing. It's a bit heavy and a bit expensive, but it ticks all of the boxes for someone who wants a classic looking bike that can do a wide variety of jobs. So today's scramblers are surprisingly capable and attractive motorcycles. Which one would appeal to your sense of nostalgia and adventure? And which ones did I miss? Let me know in the comments below and have fun scrambling. If you're interested in any of the gear that Brooke and I wear or use, or the camera equipment we use to film this channel, the links are below. Everything listed there was bought with our own money and we are not sponsored by any company. However, the links below are affiliate links and the channel is paid a small amount for referring you to shop at no additional cost to you. We do not recommend any products that we are not satisfied with ourselves, but we do strongly urge you to do your research and select the correct size for items like helmets and clothing. As always, thanks for watching, your support is greatly appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And whatever you ride, enjoy it. Wave at other bikers no matter what they're riding, we're all part of a brotherhood and sisterhood. Keep the rubber side down, shiny side up and may the spokes be with you.